challenge at all. That's why you ignore it altogether. Now, why can't the court hear a jurisdictional challenge? Because they can only do it within their own jurisdiction. No man can rule in his own cause. How could they make a ruling on jurisdiction for their own court? It's impossible. So a jurisdictional challenge is just out of the, the realm of what they're even willing to hear, right? Any, any wrongdoing by the court, they can't hear that as well, right? You'd have to take that up with a different court's jurisdiction using your transcripts that you get, right? Oh, what would be a great way to get the, to, what would be a good thing to do with those transcripts if you get them next time? No? I'd like to, yeah, <laughs> believe me. But if you decide you're going to go to trial or you really want to fight this thing, you really want to go to public servant arena court, and have it out with them, and you've got your transcripts from the last time, what would be the best thing to do with those? Make sure they're entered into evidence. File them into the court record. Now, they are a matter of record, and they're certified. They come with a certification stamp right on so, them. Just quickly before we go to break, do you think that it helps any to say on the record or for the record? Yes, but a little bit different. A little bit different. You... Uh, you got to remember, even the, the, the court act, the uh, Manitoba Court Act or whatever the hell it is that, uh, that created the provincial courts, um, just the, the entire thing is just replete with common law references right through the whole thing, right? So even though summary convictions is, is kept off private for that whole reason, to keep things off the record, because anything of record is in common law jurisdiction. That's why they keep it private. Off the record, transcripts aren't nothing, nothing really happened. Right? And that's a lesson I learned once. I think I told you guys that where the sheriffs came in, the judge just looked at the sheriffs, they walked over, they grabbed me, I didn't say anything. They took me downstairs for an hour, brought me back up. And the next time I went to court, I was like, oh yeah, like the last time when you guys had the sheriffs grab me and, and throw me downstairs, they're like, oh, I don't see any record of that. I was like, oh, you bastards. And they're right, there was no record of it. So I made sure there was a record of it. Next time I came back to court, I had an affidavit sworn out of what happened. And I filed that into the court record. And yes, now there was a record of it. So they started to get kind of nervous at the end of three days. So I did that myself. Uh, I've died, and I figured that out last year somehow. I didn't even know what was going on. But I was able to make it a court of record by swearing out an affidavit of everything that happened last time and filing that into the, into the, uh, the, 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 the summary convictions desk so that an affidavit was now on the record. And it's up to the Crown to rebut that. And the Crown gets a copy of everything you file into the record. You don't even need to produce one for them. But that's what I was getting at. I was going to get onto a different tangent here about dealing with these matters before it goes to court. And that is a simple matter that we all get mad at the court. You know, we want to start yelling at the judge and telling the judge things. And this is what's going to work around here in the whole nine yards. And I'm a sovereign and you bow down to me kind of stuff. Why, why are we even talking to the judge about these matters? Who brought the claim to the court? Crown. Why is our problem the judge? The judge is only going off the information he was given by the Crown. The Crown said we were a public servant and we were disobeying orders. So who's our problem with? Crown. So we want to address that guy first. And we want to do it before court. And we can rip his case apart, destroy it before even the first hearing. Period. And that's by contacting this guy and requesting particulars that he's not going to be giving us in full disclosure. For instance, One of the things I'd want to want to get some, some clarification of before I ever go to court is I'd want something from the Crown proving that I was even performing a function of government, acting as an agent of the government at the time the complaint was made. It's all capacity, right? Mm -hmm. So you just turn that around. And instead of trying to prove the negative with the onus on you, you get them to them prove. And there's a couple of very easy ways to do that I've come up with that I haven't even, I, I don't think I'm ever going to have to try to use them in court. I don't think there's going to be much of a problem with that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing that I was just going to say, and I kind of forgot. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah. When you, yes, yeah, let me know how much time we have left. Uh, well, a minute or two. A minute or two? We'll go for okay. A yeah. Everybody has to understand also that just because you produced a driver's license to the side of the road does not mean you were acting in that capacity at the time. You may have produced a driver's license. Big deal. A cop can show you his badge when he's at home having dinner with his family. Does that mean he's on duty? No. Aren't badges recycled? I have no idea. Absolutely no clue. That's another thing I covered last time too, by the way. People are always asking me questions about this and that and everything else. And I like to tell people right off the hop, say, look, I, I've come to the conclusion 
that I'm not making presumptions anymore about what the government's doing because it's impossible to prove. I don't know what you're thinking right now. I don't know what anybody in this room is thinking. But what I can do is I can make a statement of what I'm thinking and what I'm doing and I shield myself with that, right? Then I don't give a shit what anybody else is doing because I know what's going on in my own little bubble over here. This I can prove. I can't prove anything else. And the same thing with them. They can only prove things on their side. They can't really prove your intent or anything that you've done, period. So now, the, once the burden of proof gets onto them, they're pretty much sunk. And there's easy ways to get them, basically, to prove your case for you. And these, they're all pretty simple as well. So, And we can touch on a couple of the things that uh, I think the, the, the one guy that went into court, uh, whose story was that about uh, basically telling the, telling the judge they were a terrorist? Yeah, that was, that was okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was, I mean, that was good. It was funny. I didn't think he was actually going to do that when I told him to do that that one time. So, okay, we'll break though. Then we'll yeah, we'll cut it out. Yeah, and then we'll come back. Okay, I can't even remember what we were going to speak about in the second half here now. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Here's the other thing too. A lot of people don't understand. They think that when they go down to the uh, they go down to the police and they make a statement, you know, like. Uh, uh, you know, so and so with the RCMP phones you up, and oh, we've got a complaint against you, or somebody says you've assaulted somebody else, and we need you to come down to the station and make a statement, right? And you're like, and what, what happens if you just say, ah, you know what, I, I don't really think I, I, I should come down and make a statement, I just don't want to. And they try to force you to come down and make a statement, and well, we'll come arrest you, or we'll do this, or the whole nine yards, and you better come and do it peacefully while you still have the chance, the whole nine yards, okay? Number one, you have every right in the world to never testify against yourself until you've actually been charged. Because all you're gonna do by going down talking to them in advance is give them more information to use to charge you. Once they've made the charge, they cannot add information to it. It's done, period. So why would you ever go speak to these people before you've been charged, number one. Number two, everybody thinks that everything they talk about with the RCMP is a matter of, a matter of public record. That's the same misunderstanding people have with summary convictions court. What on earth would make people think that anything they talk about with the RCMP is a matter of public, public record? They're a private corporation. They're a private service. They're private entirely. Anything that you tell them is going to be held internally. It's going to be private information. And they will choose what they're going to use and what they're not going to use. Do you think they're ever going to use anything to help you? <laughs> Absolutely not. Not even not likely. No, never. They never would do it, period. So it's actually completely against, <laughs> against you to go say anything to these people ever. In fact, you should never have to speak with them. Yeah. After you've been charged, well, you've got every right in the world to then go in to fight that charge and summary conviction, right? Or wherever they decide to take you. So no, the art, so that it kind of comes down to, again, the records are being kept. RCMP records are kept by the RCMP. Crown records are kept by the Crown. Okay, that's all private. Nothing exists in the public. So when we, um, I don't know how many times we've gone to court and we've gone in there complaining to the judge, well, you know what, we sent all these documents to the Crown and they haven't replied and this and that, the whole nine yards, the Crown just stands there and goes, I don't know what they're talking about, I never got nothing from them. Now we're standing there with a handful of, of registered mail receipts of stuff we sent to the Crown Prosecution. They deny it right to your face, right in court. Well, number one, they know they don't have to worry about it because you're unaware of the fact that transcripts aren't on the record anyways. But number two, they don't have to worry because they already know the court's not going to let you file any stuff in the court record. So he's pretty much going to get away scot-free with completely lying in the courtroom. Just outright, outright blatant fraud. So that's one of the things we want to address with people is number one is how to start getting the stuff into the court record and then number two, making sure that the transcripts are available. Um, you know what, even if the transcripts aren't going to help you in summary conviction, those transcripts are going to help you when you take them to task to answer for their crimes in your arena. And that's the common law arena. And what is common law at the courts? Queen's bench. Why aren't people taking Crown attorneys and, and, uh, and government officials and even, even summary convictions itself, which is a, a private corporation? Why aren't people taking them to Queen's Bench? File your own lawsuit against them in Queen's Bench. Right? Just read through the Crown's Liability Act. It's all there. They're liable, but no one ever does that. 
period. I've never even heard of that. I asked around. Everybody I know in Canada has been doing this stuff for a decade. I said, yeah, who's the last guy to take somebody to Queen's Bench and lose? And they're like, I don't, I don't think we've ever taken anybody into Queen's Bench. <laughs> well, it's there. It's there for us to use. That's our remedy. It's in Queen's Bench. Why the hell has nobody done this yet? In fact, it blew my mind. I can't believe it. We've been, we've been fighting people. We've been on the defensive for, for 15 years in summary convictions. And nobody has once yet taken everything that happened in summary convictions and gone to Queen's Bench with it and filed a claim against them, the government, which you can. You better believe they're going to have to hear that because otherwise there's no such thing as courts for us. So Queen's Bench has to hear it even when it's against the province of Manitoba. Period. And that is a court of record. Everything that happens there is a court of record. So that's very important. It's the only court of record that we have access to. What, Queen's Bench? Queen's Bench. Now, summary convictions, and I know some people are doing this now. Summary convictions, um, <coughs> what a lot of people are doing now, you've got to remember, at any time you can invoke common law, even, or, uh, even in summary convictions. And that's one of the things you brought up earlier. And that's one of the best ways to do that is not, to, is not saying something on and for the record, right? Because we all know that's just going to go on to the record that we get a transcript of. I mean, I've said that before. I'd like, I'd like to say something for the record. And he's like, Mr. Clifford, everything here is on the record. Right? Or everything here is a matter of record or something like that. Whatever the hell they say, it turns out to be just nonsense. Because, it's, of course, it's in the transcripts. But the transcripts aren't part of the public record. That's the difference. You've got to remember that. RCMP keep their own records. Right? Crown keeps their own records. If it's not a matter of public record, it never happened. Those are all private institutions. They're not a matter of public record. I was just going to say, um, can you go to the courthouse and order a review record? Order a record or whatever. Some yep. Case. The way to get it into the file? Just order the record and put it in the file. In the bathroom. Yeah, but they're not, they're not allowing you to put it in the court file anymore. No, what I mean is. It seems really simple. <laughs> Yep. The transcripts, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Okay. Now it's public record. Well, so when people look at this, I'm going to tell you why. Well, okay, yeah, it's in a public record, mm -hmm. but, but is record is it in the summary convictions file that you're fighting? Queen's bench. That Queen's bench and summary convictions have nothing to do with one another. You're at the food court, okay. and you're trying to take stuff from Taco Bell and put it into A and W's wicket. <coughs> okay, you can't do that. They have nothing to do with one another. Okay, and they're not, they're not allowing us access to the summary convictions files. And we don't know what to do about it. We didn't until recently, like we've, we've come up with some reasons, we, uh, some stuff we've talked about here before in class that I won't get into right now on camera and stuff like that, but uh, for getting access to the, to the, to the court files. But uh, where was I going to that? The public, yeah. So everybody has to understand that this stuff is not making it into the public record. So when you say stuff in court, like on and for the record, and they're like, of course, everything here is on the record. Well, they're talking about the transcripts. That's all they're talking about. It's not actually getting into the court file that the judge sees. That's the public record, right? So one of the ways you can invoke common law is to walk into the court when they're first starting up the hearing, and they call the name, and they say, yeah, you know, blah, blah, so-and-so against, uh, you know, whatever, Dean Clifford, and you get up there and you said, yeah, I'm here, I'm here regarding that matter. And, they're, and they say, name. And you can, I don't care what you say at that point. You can actually say, well, my name, my name is Dean, but I'm not the legal person. I say, and I'm convening a court of record. As soon as you tell them that you're con you are convening a court of record, everything that now happens in that courtroom is on the record. Because you are the trinity. Well, it doesn't really matter who you are. If you want to convene a court of record, then you convene it, but nobody ever does. You can be anybody. As long as, you are in aid, as long as you're there in that courtroom and you have standing, you can convene a court of record. They never do that. The two people I do know that have done that, Judge and the Crowns both got up and walked out of the room because they didn't want anything that they were going to say or do being on the public record. <laughs>